people have to be told that, you know, that um, COVID-19 is not some Chinese plot to destroy the the Western civilization, which is the story that uh, Mike Pence and, you know, Pompeo and, and, and the Donald himself clearly, and probably Boris Johnson as well, would have us believe because that's the way their minds work. So I'm now 100 miles almost from New York in the countryside somewhere in isolation. So, um, you know, like everybody else, I'm sort of waiting to see what's going to happen and and whether all all the panicking about, oh, the world economy is going to collapse and it'll be, you know, billions of people are going to die of starvation because we isolated or what whatever the whatever the current fad story may be um thank goodness we have electron microscopes and we have um you know competent medical authorities who are doing the research and who uh and uh, who are trying to figure out what to do if you have a health service it has to be about providing health care for the people uh, and of course, in the United States, they don't have one. They have a health service for rich people, and that's it. It's it's very it's a strange and alien um, atmosphere for an Englishman who grew up with the National Health Service, uh, you know, in England. And it's really interesting the way the more socialized societies are resisting um, the empire and are kicking back. So so you see it in you know. Obviously, in South America, in Venezuela and Bolivia and Mexico now, and you, you see this struggle going on between the pure, purest evil of Bolsonaro and you know whatever his name is, Marquez in Colombia, and and all, all, all of that, and you know the Bolivarian Revolution. It doesn't matter whether it's Bolivar or or Che Guevara or whoever it is, but for for the last couple of hundred years, people have been trying to figure out how to wrest power from the monarchs and allow it to devolve to the people. My politics now have come down to this tiny platform, um, which is this platform. It's Paris 1948, Universal Declaration of Human Rights. I believe in it. So if I'm having a conversation with somebody from the Israeli lobby, I will say to them, do you believe in it? I would say this to Donald Trump or Mike Pompeo or Mike Pence, or do you believe in it? And if they're honest, they go, no, absolutely. Are you insane? Of course we don't believe in human rights. Well, I do. I think it's fundamentally important. And the only way for this globe to survive is for us to respect the thinking that's gone on since the Enlightenment over the last two, three hundred years, and to accept that there that there is a route forward, but it but it can only we can only move forward and save this fragile planet that we call home um, if we cooperate with one another rather than fighting one another.